other. So, so far the past two weeks, we've played around with this idea of doing tic tacs, that is, moving the poi back and forth on each side of your body, both forwards and reverse with each hand. And we've played around with the concept of a basic same time, same direction hip reel. Now, this week we're going to play around with how we expand these turns into additional plane orientations and how we do them in other uh, timing and direction combinations, right? Um, and we're going to start off by uh, playing around both with what we learned last week and the week before. Namely, uh, we're going to start from this place where we have our poi turning same time, same direction on either side of our body, and we're going to add a little bit of spice to it. Uh, if you guys remember your tic tacs, what you're going to do is tic tac but with only one hand. So, for example, I'm going to start with my right hand, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate having the poi between my arms and then back on the outside of my right shoulder, like so. And just like everything else we've practiced, play around with this until you can do about 10 of them solidly in a row without any problems, and that tells you you're getting it relatively close to uh, muscle memory. When you look at this from the side, it doesn't look so terribly different from what we've done already. But the key is what happens when you stop with the right hand on the inside and the left hand on the outside. When I perform it this way, with the audience on this side, I can then turn 90 degrees into my poi. And now they seem to be rotating parallel in the same plane. This is what we refer to as wall plane, because it feels kind of like there's a wall of poi in front of you, right? In order to avoid tangling the poi, I recommend having your hands about a poi's length distance apart, or slightly longer if you can. This is where it comes in handy to have shorter poi, although overall I think it's helpful to have uh, more medium length poi for doing this exercise, because the longer the poi are, the more readily they stay in plane. Um, once you've gotten to this particular place, it looks like this from the side, notice how both of them are in the same track, you're going to take your left hand and do a reverse tic-tac with it. It's okay to turn your body slightly as you're doing this. You could also try not moving your body at all as you do this, in which case the tic-tac goes in front of you and behind you. To start off though, I think it'll probably be easier if you're faced a little towards it as you perform this. Now, the next time the tic-tac takes the poi to the outside of your arm, so that now both poi are rotating on the outsides, you once again turn your body into them so that you're in a wheel plane place. And you'll find that just like when we did our same time, same direction hip reel, the poi now seem to be going reverse rather than forwards the way they were when we started, right? Okay, so the next step will be going back to the right hand, and once again, initiating a set of tic-tacs with it. It can be challenging to uh, keep the poi in phase with each other as you're doing this. They might have a tendency to do something that is, I like to refer to as clocking, where there's just slightly out of phase to the point where it's noticeable. Um, if you get into a good rhythm where you're always kind of like pumping them up and down at the same time, uh, it'll help out a lot in keeping them in phase. But once again, you want to look for this place where the right poi is between your arms and the left poi is on the outside. And then you'll turn your body 90 degrees such that you now have them rotating in parallel on the same track. If I do this from the side, the result looks like this. And you'll note, when uh, I did my first wall plane turn, they were both going this direction, which to me looks like clockwise, to you looks like counterclockwise. After this last turn, it looks like they're going clockwise to you, counterclockwise to me. This is because in wall plane, the same rules apply as wheel plane. Every time you make a 180 degree turn, it looks as though the poi has switched direction. So, to finish this off, we'll go ahead and switch back to the left hand, and switch back and forth in tic-tac, from the side, it looks like this. And once again, you can move your body slightly into it if it helps you work out where the poi is supposed to be. 
and stop it when it's on the outside of your arms. Turn into it. And now we've returned to this place where the poor are turning forwards at our sides in wheel plane. Now you'll note, as I'm performing this, if you look at it from the sides, the poi always appear to be flat in the same kind of orientation. That is, they always appear to be a straight line from the perspective of the camera. If the camera is on the side of me, however, it makes it always appear as though the poi are in full profile of their circles, right? So this is one way you can think about keeping the poi in plane, is that kind of set of walls on either side of you, or tracks. You're essentially just switching between, if you imagine you've got your pair of wagon wheels, the track for two wheels, and the track for one wheel. But you're always fundamentally stuck between those two tracks, right? Um, there are exceptions to this rule, but it's stuff that uh, is more kind of advanced 3D work, and we're, we're not going to get there in this tutorial. What we are going to get to, however, is talking about how to do this same kind of uh, turn, but do it in opposites at the same time. Um, when we work in opposite same time in a wall plane kind of place, this is really frequently referred to as butterfly. Uh, or, in this case, I'm performing it more as a thread the needle where I'm switching which hand is on top each time. Uh, turning with this is a bit more of a challenge, though, and that's why we, we're, we're breaking it down like this, because shooting through the steps like this helps you overall get down all the basic uh, muscle skills or motor skills for it. So, to start with, we're going to take our butterfly from a wheel plane kind of place. You'll note if you look at this head on, it doesn't look that terribly much different from same time, same direction, but it does from the side. Um, if you're having problems getting into uh, this opposite same time place, the thing I find most helpful in trying to get there is start with whichever hand is going reverse. In this case, it's my left hand. Then take the hand that's going forwards, because for some reason that always seems more intuitive to me. I don't know, if, if reverse is more intuitive for you, then start with the hand that uh, it rather start with whichever hand is going to go forwards in this. But the approach to turns is not so terribly different. What we're going to do, once again, is take the right hand and attempt to do tic-tacs with it, going between the arms and then back out, right? We saw this before. If we take it from a place where the right hand uh, poise between the arms and then turn 90 degrees into it, we've come into a place where we're doing reverse butterfly. Awesome. You'll also notice that if we look at this from the side, they're together in the same track again, right? This is wall plane. And the way out of this is that we're going to take our left hand then and do a series of tic tacs over to the left hand side of the body. When you look at it from the side, it looks like this. And once again, feel free to turn your body a little bit as you're doing this. This won't feel too terribly difficult because both the right hand and the left hand for their first set of tic tacs feel like they're going forwards. But when you stop on the left hand side of your body, you're going to turn 90 degrees into it and you should now find that whichever hand was going forwards when you started is now going reverse and whichever hand is going, was going reverse when you started is now going forwards. This is because the same rules apply that uh, did to our turns in the same time, same direction. It's just that because they're spinning in opposites, they're now spinning opposites, but in the opposite way. So now it's my right hand that's going reverse, my left hand that's going forwards, right? Okay, so with my right hand, I'm going to commence a set of reverse tic tacs, taking the poi between my arms, and then back outside. And next time it goes between my arms, I turn 90 degrees into it, and I'm in forwards butterfly in wall plane, of course. And, to cap off the move, I'm going to take my left hand, do a set of tape tacks, and stop it on the outside of my left shoulder, turn 90 degrees into it, and congratulations, you're now back where you started. Altogether, if you're taking that piece by piece, it looks something like this. Now here's why this is important. As you practice this, 
You can skip points if you want to. You could say opt to only stay in wall plane, or rather wheel plane, if you preferred, like so. In which case you're jumping straight through those wall plane places. You could also opt to jump straight through all of those wheel plane places, so you're just turning with butterflies. It's when you get really, really comfortable with each and every one of these positions that you're able to start playing around like that. And, of course, you can start playing around with the idea of turning with opposites in any plane orientation that you may want. It's totally up to you. If you want to take it in wall plane, you can. If you want to take it in wheel plane, you can. But what about the split time moves? Well, the same rules apply. If you go into split time, same direction, once again, I start with my tic tac, I switch into wall plane, I tic tac reverse with my left hand, I switch into wheel plane, I tic tac reverse with my right hand, I switch into wall plane facing the other way, and I cap it off by tic tac in with my left hand to go back home. And once I get really comfortable with that, I can turn them in any orientation that I want. Same thing goes with uh, split opposites. Split opposites, I very rarely real turn with just because I feel like it doesn't look as clean as same time opposites, but you guys might have a different opinion on that. So, that is Poi Turns 101. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, please, please, please send me suggestions as to what to do uh, my next beginner series on, and uh, I will try my best to fulfill them. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll be back next Friday with the next series of uh, beginner tutorials. Thank you, and uh, have a great weekend. Peace.